you know how to be happy no matter what? Oh, Charlotte, Chris, Chris, no matter what's going on, no matter what life throws at you, you can still be happy. That is a real skill. If we are to trek into the future of our lives, we need to prepare for whatever may be lying ahead. And we don't know what's going to come right around the corner sometimes. We are flying by the seat of our pants sometimes. So congratulations to those of you who are able to do that. Coping well can see beyond the circumference, circumference of the circumstance. And when you can do that, and you can do it well, then you become so adept every time that you rise to the occasion that pretty soon you can do just about anything. No matter what's going on, remember to smile. Even when everything is just flying at you and you didn't prepare for it, it might not be comfortable or convenient. Just keep smiling, just keep going. And every time we cope well, it's another deposit into our courage and creativity as well as our self-esteem. When I first moved from Los Angeles to Maui, I came with my best friend, my son, and her son. And we were getting on the plane, and we had too much stuff. I had gotten rid of everything I had, and they said, no, you can't take all that on the plane. You're gonna have to get rid of something. And Debbie goes, get rid of the boogie board. You can just rent them on Maui. And I said, Debbie, there's going to be days I can't rent my last name. We're taking the boogie board. And I repacked everything in the duffel bag and squished it down with my foot. And by golly, he brought that boogie board. I still have that boogie board. And my son had so much fun riding that boogie board on days when we had no money. And we're walking around Lahaina trying to find bananas on a tree to eat until I got my next paycheck. Thank goodness I worked at a restaurant. I was thrilled when I realized that we could buy things on sale all the time. I was going to the market every day because Jason would eat everything that was in the house. When I met my second husband there, I was so surprised and shocked that I was going to get married again because somebody told me the chances of a woman are over 40 getting married again, you've got a better chance of being killed by a terrorist. I thought, oh, gee. Thank you very much. Of course, now looking back, yeah, maybe that might have been a better idea. And we came to <laughs> shopping for things for Puna when we moved to the Big Island. He's still arguing with me. He said, what do we need a wheelbarrow for? It's like, oh man, I should just divorce him right now. But we didn't. We waited a while until things got really bad before that happened. <laughs> we had the foresight and I realized during this time that my past was creating my present, and my present was creating my future. And when he made me sell that house that I bought, and I had to move to this other house in Orchid Land, and I was able to walk there with the donkey, I was so grateful to have the donkey. You know who the donkey is. I say it again, or maybe I do. I ended up with the one who's not the ass. I still have that donkey, love him to pieces, but taking care of that big three-acre yard is not easy because we have a year-round growing season. No matter what you're doing, no matter what kind of weather it is, everything just keeps growing. I never thought that would become a problem. It didn't appear to be a problem at the time. I tried to embrace it. <laughs> Sometimes I work out in the yard wearing a snorkel, but it's okay <laughs> because I grow so much food. I can, I can eat my way through the yard no matter what kind of day I'm having. And you have to look for those things. You have to look for the bright spots in your life. No matter what's going on, you look at what you have. The people that had to evacuate during the last lava flow, they didn't walk around saying what they lost. They said, I still have this and I've still got that. And if you can focus on what you have, instead of what you lost. You can go places, you can move forward. When I lived on Maui, I organized a mural painting party where we had events and posters and speakers and music. And the whole idea was to paint a mural. And we did paint a mural, but we painted trash cans and we planted trees.
freeze. And then, and then on Friday, Hurricane Niki came. And after Hurricane Niki left, the only thing that was left was the mural. And that's what I was able to take away from that. I was so glad that I had the attitude to remember how lucky I was. Sometimes in the middle of the night, somebody will pull up my driveway and do something stupid, and I start <laughs> yelling because I forgot to close the gate. What do you want? I'm looking for a woman. And I'm like, no, dude, you're in the wrong place. Oh, you're a woman. And then the donkey will go, <laughs> and he'll screech out the back of the driveway, and I'll be so glad I have that donkey. He's my protector. He's the one. He's the one that keeps me going. So remember, you can be happy, you can be happier, or you can be happiest. But no matter what, look at your resilience. Test your skills with your optimism. And remember, the most valuable possession you can possibly have in this world is an open heart, said by Carlos, Pastor, Carlos Santana. And the most powerful weapon you can be is an instrument of peace. So go forth with your Toastmaster skills and be optimistic and resilient and know that